Hey Savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here, and today we'll be installing Manjaro Linux on VirtualBox using a Windows 10 host computer. We'll first download Manjaro Linux, then we'll create a new virtual machine, and finally run how to install Manjaro Linux on that virtual machine. If you're new and stopping by to watch a video today, make sure to subscribe below and hit the notification bell for more videos. So I'm here on the Manjaro website, where I'm going to go ahead and download Manjaro from. There's really two ways to go ahead and get Manjaro here, you can go to the More tab and hit the Mirrors where you can download Manjaro from, or you can go ahead and just hit the Try Manjaro button in order to download it. So let's go ahead and click that, it's right on the main page. And here you see that we have access to Manjaro, the XFCE desktop environment. It's currently version 19. And if we go down, you can see that you also have access to the KDE Plasma version and the GNOME desktop version as well. So you can go ahead and pick and choose whichever one you like using the most. I honestly like uh, the KDE Plasma version, so I'm going to go ahead and download that one. And we have two options here, the 64-bit version with packages pre-installed, and that's the one I want, so I'm going to go ahead and hit the download button. Here Manjaro is giving just a little bit of acknowledgements, but I'm going to hit the great take me to the download button. And we just wait a few moments, and then the Manjaro KDE ISO will start downloading below. Now that I've downloaded the ISO, I'm going to launch and use the VirtualBox app. So I'm just going to hit the start menu and search for VirtualBox and just launch it. VirtualBox is available at virtualbox.org where you can download it. Also, if you want to learn more about VirtualBox, check out my walkthrough and install video. It's a great place to start if you're a beginner. I'll make sure to put a link in the description below. VirtualBox is an open source software for virtualization of machines. Simply put, you can emulate a computer through the use of the software. And what we'll do is create a new virtual machine by hitting the new button. And here we're going to name it Manjaro since that's what we're installing today. I'm just going to put Linux there. And since Manjaro is actually based off of Arch Linux, let's go ahead and select the emulation for Arch Linux, the 64-bit version, since that's the ISO that we just got done downloading. As you can see, the type got filled in automatically for us. If you need to, go ahead and select the Linux. And the only reason it was is because we typed in Linux and it recognized that. So after that's done, we'll go ahead and hit next. And then let's go ahead and choose the memory size that we're going to go ahead and give our virtual machine based on the amount that we have on our host computer. So you can see I have 32 gigs available to myself. I don't want to give the full 32 gigs because then I'll starve my Windows 10 system of all the physical memory. So I'm just going to go ahead and for me, give it 8 gigs. Keep in mind, most Linux distributions want two gigs or more, but you want to try avoiding getting into the orange or red zones because you will starve your computer of memory if you devote everything to the virtual machine. Go ahead and once you have your memory in, you can hit next. Following that, we have to create a virtual hard disk and it says we can create a virtual hard disk now, which is the option that we want and is defaulted there. Let's go ahead and hit create. And now we're asked what type of hard disk file we want to create. The VDI default is fine for me because it's native to VirtualBox and that's what I plan on using. These two other ones might be a little better if you're planning on trying to migrate to different virtualization softwares in the future, but since I don't plan on doing that, I'm going to go ahead and select the default VDI and hit next. Following that, we get to choose whether our virtual hard disk is dynamically allocated or has a fixed size. If you select fixed size, VirtualBox will take whatever amount of storage space that you select and completely devote it to the virtual machine. Dynamically allocated means that virtual box will go ahead and only use up the amount of storage space that the virtual machine currently needs, and you'll get to select a limit in the next screen. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose the default. Most of the time that's the best option in order to save storage space. Then go ahead and select next. In here we get to specify what the limit for the new virtual hard disk that we're creating. So I'm going to go ahead and put at least 32 gigs in because I've ran into issues before creating Linux virtual machines if I didn't have at least 32 gigs available for storage space. I'm going to go ahead and hit create after that. You can always specify, you can always specify more than 32 gigs. It says up to two terabytes here. So if you do have more space available, feel free to go ahead and give it to your virtual machine. After you're done with that, go ahead and hit create and give it a moment to go ahead and create the virtual machine. VirtualBox is developed by Oracle and thanks to them, we have a very powerful and free virtualization software, which is more than suitable for most computers. Virtualization just refers to the process where you create a virtual machine in an emulated environment such as VirtualBox. And a virtual machine is just a platform that runs an emulated computer 
with the hardware and resources that are available alongside your main computer in a virtual environment. So let's go ahead and select our Manjaro Linux and hit settings. And let's go ahead and go through a few settings here. First, let's go to system and then select the enable EFI. Now you can use EFI or not. All that does is allows for the emulation of EFI BIOS instead of the legacy MBR, which most computers nowadays do run some form of EFI BIOS. So it's nice to do this in order to emulate a newer computer. In processors, we'll go ahead and specify how many cores we want to use. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually devote two cores to my virtual machine. If you don't have that available, that's fine. You can keep it at one core. I just, this just helps run things a little bit more smoother. So I'm gonna go ahead and after that, hit storage. In storage, you can see that we have the Manjaro Linux.bdi file that we just got done creating. This is our virtual hard disk. And then we have an empty optical disk under our IDE controller. What we'll do is go ahead and select that empty disk, which says no disk image file selected, and go over to the right and actually choose a disk file. That disk file is gonna be the one we just got done downloading. As you can see here, I have the Manjaro KDE version 19, 64 bit image, and I'm gonna go ahead and select that and hit open. Once things have populated, I'm gonna go ahead and hit the okay button. And now we're ready to go ahead and start our machine. So in order to do so, let's just go ahead and hit the start button up top. And once the virtual machine starts up, you'll get this notification just to be able to select the startup disk since there's nothing on the virtual machine currently. As you can see, Manjaro KD19 is already selected for me, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit start since we already did that through the settings. If the proper one isn't selected, that just means you have more than one image available in your optical disk right now. As you can see, I've had other ones in the past like MX Linux. So just make sure to select the proper one and hit start. Give it a few moments here. And I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of the automatic timeout by just moving around. And then the next thing I wanna do is go into scaled mode. So you can do that by hitting view and hit scaled mode. What that will do is scale the resolution for us a little bit so we can go ahead and see this better. Now we have a little bit bigger virtual machine available to us right now and we'll fix the resolution later on when we install things. If you went ahead and made it this far, please hit the like button, it really does help me out. So what I wanna do right now is go ahead, so what I wanna do right now is hit the boot Manjaro x86-64 KD option. Give it a few moments to start up now. Another neat thing about VirtualBox is that it's available for most platforms, including Mac OS, Windows, and Linux. It really doesn't matter what system you're using because the layout of VirtualBox doesn't really change. So you'll be familiar on any host platform where you choose to install VirtualBox on. All right, now that things are booted up, let's go ahead and just get rid of some of these notifications and exit out of the greeter here. The option we want to select is the install Manjaro option. Go ahead and click that. And now you can see that we have the installer in front of us. Let's go ahead and select a language to run through with the installer. American English, the default is fine for me. Make sure you go through the drop down and select the one that you want to use and hit next. Following that, we'll select a time zone that we're currently in. Today, I'll be in Alaska. Make sure to go ahead and change the system language here since American English United States is the default. That works for me, but you can hit the change button here and change it. Also make sure to change the locale so it also reflects your country or territory. Go ahead and hit the change button and select the proper one. Once you've done both of those, go ahead and hit next. Following that, we'll want to go ahead and test our keyboard. I have the English default, which is fine for me. You can go ahead, of course, select whatever keyboard you're using and go ahead and type something in here. So I typed in QWERTY and I saw I got that out. Things seem to be working just fine. And once you've tested things, you can hit the next button. As you can see here, it's detected that it's an EFI BIOS based virtual box hard disk. And you can see we have a 32 gigabyte hard disk now available to us. That's the one we just got done creating. You shouldn't see any more options except the virtual box hard disk that you just got done creating in your virtual machine. And the only option for us here is really to erase the disk and delete any data that's currently present on it. Well, since we just created a new virtual storage space, we don't have to worry about deleting any data because there's no data on it. Following that, we can select swap. That's some extra memory that can exist alongside the physical memory on your storage space. I like to go ahead and select the swap with no hibernation option. And as you can see, it added 3.2 gigabytes of swap. And then Manjaro has 28.9 gigabytes available, at least for me, ext4 formatted file system. And then a FAT32 file system that allows us 
to have the EFI boot partition on it. You can also select encrypting the system, which will just put another layer of security on top and ask you for a password while you're logging in. I'm not gonna choose that option. I'm perfectly fine with the way it is. And I'm just gonna go ahead and select next. After I've done that, we can go ahead and put in our full name. So Savvy Nick for me. What username do I wanna log in with? Savvy Nick works as well. What's the name of the computer? Savvy Nick will work. And then go ahead and put a password in and confirm that password. After that, you can go ahead and also say if you wanna log in automatically without a password. I don't usually suggest selecting this option just so a user can't restart your virtual machine and then be able to log in without a password. You can also use the same password you have above for your administrator account if you don't wanna go ahead and put a new one in. I'm just gonna go ahead and select that option, make it a little easier on myself, you don't have to. Go ahead and hit the next button after that. And now we get to select between an office suite. We have the free office suite available, the LibreOffice suite, or no suite at all. So if you don't need a word processor, PowerPoint, and all that other fun stuff, you can go ahead and select the no office suite. But I'm gonna go ahead and choose LibreOffice for myself so I can play around with it. I'm gonna hit the next button. And now we have an overview of all the changes that are gonna be made and installed on our disk. So I'm happy with this. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the install button and we're just being warned that the installer is about to make changes to our disks. If we're confident in the fact that we want to go ahead and install these changes to our disk, we'll hit the install now button. Manjaro Linux is a user-friendly distribution based on Arch Linux and deploys and offers a great user interface with tweaked desktop environments, including XFCE, KDE Plasma, and GNOME. They have a stable or semi-rolling release model that they use and upkeep, and they have a great community for support available if you need it on top of everything else. It makes Arch Linux really easy to install on your computer instead of having to go through the normal Arch Linux terminal installation, which makes Manjaro a great alternative to Arch Linux. So we'll give this a few minutes just to go ahead and finish installing. All right, and once the installer is all finished, it'll tell you that it's all done. And we'll go ahead and select the Restart Now option in order to restart our virtual machine and hit the Done button. So it'll take a few moments here and just restart our virtual machine. And here we go, we're being welcomed by the sign-in screen for our new user, so Savvy Nick. I'm just gonna type in my password that I created and hit Login so we can log into our newly installed Monjaro Linux virtual machine. And I'm just gonna exit again out of the notifications here. As you can tell, we have the greeter in front of us just telling us welcome to Manjaro. I'm gonna also exit out of this. And the one thing I wanna do is I'm gonna go ahead and put this in full screen mode so we can see it a little better. So all I do is control F and switch it. Now I'm gonna change the resolution. That's usually the first thing I do as soon as I get in here. Sometimes I can, sometimes I can't depending on the Linux distribution. That's because I still haven't installed the guest edition CD. I'm gonna go ahead and try this real quick and see how that looks. And that didn't really work. So I'm gonna try another one here. And that didn't work as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and just cancel out of this and put it back into the scaled mode for now so we can see it. What we'll do here in a moment is try installing the guest edition CD and that should help things out. So in order to do that, what we'll need to do is insert the guest edition CD. The best way to do this is actually in full screen mode. So if I'm in full screen mode, I'll get the option at the bottom to hit devices and insert the guest edition CD image. And it says that I'm unable to insert it into my optical disc. That's because I already have something in my optical disc. So let me see if I can go ahead and remove that. So if I go to optical discs, let's see if it allows me to unmount the disc and it looks like it was able to. So let's try inserting the guest editions again. And it didn't look like it complained this time. And I'm gonna open it up with the file manager. What I wanna run is this VBox Linux editions run file. So I'm gonna go to the root actions and just open a terminal here. If I go ahead and type in my password for my root user, I should be in the folder with the VBox Linux editions that run file and it looks like I am. So let me just go ahead and try running that by doing vboxlinuxeditions.run and typing in yes and hopefully things will install here without a problem. Sometimes the process is not straightforward for every Linux distribution in order to go ahead and run the VirtualBox guest edition CD. Uh, as it's saying here, we're missing some header kernel 
as it says here, it's saying install the Linux kernel header files. They are not coming with Manjaro here. On some Linux distributions, it is a little easier to go ahead and install this. VirtualBox guest editions tools, you'll need them, but I'll let you go ahead and figure out how to install them on Manjaro. And let's go through the desktop environment real quick. On the top right hand corner, you just have a few shortcuts available to you, locking the screen, leaving, opening up the file browser, adding some widgets, and showing the desktop or refreshing the desktop. On the right hand side below, you can go ahead and adjust your toolbar with the options on the far right hand side. It allows you to configure the panel. And then you have the time and date, as well as any other hidden icons that aren't being displayed down here in the toolbar. You have the volume control as well as the clipboard options. You can mount or unmount the most recent device as well as look at the current wired or wireless connections that you have. And since we have a emulated network adapter, it's going to show up as a wired connection, even if you're using wireless on your host computer. You can see that there's updates available as well as hitting this M here will allow you to access the settings for Manjaro. You also have the trash available as well as the show desktop option right here. On the far left hand side, you have Firefox, their default web browser, Dolphin, their default file manager, as well as more workspaces available to you so you can switch between different desktops. On the left hand side, there's start menu where you can go ahead and type and search for various different applications on the operating system as well as some suggestions. And if you go down here, you can scroll between your favorites, applications and their subcategories. You have a computer so you can check out things such as the current user directories, history, so you can go through various different things that you've already opened up in the past, and finally leave, which allows you to shut down, restart, and log out of your computer. Well, I hope you enjoyed this install of Manjaro Linux. I'm gonna go ahead and shut things down at this point. Let me know if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions. Feel free to post them in the comments section below. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos, and make sure to like the video. Thanks for watching.